I want to start by asking you, is it true that your father paid you a nickel for every story you wrote as you were growing up? That's very true. How did you know that? Yes, he did. And is that what inspired you um, to write? Money? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, actually, my father and my mother were wonderful storytellers. Everything in our family became a story. And they were teachers, both school teachers. They're still living. But they both were very insp inspirational to me. And you attended Dartmouth College, um, and your freshman year coincided with the opening of this new Native American Studies blog that was led by your future husband right. and collaborator. Is that what sparked kind of your interest in writing about your ancestry? No, I was always interested in, in writing. I didn't know in what form I would write or what, what form it would take, but uh, I, I'm sure that my education had a lot to do with how I eventually began to form the words and I got, brought me confidence. But I always wanted to write. And why do you focus on Native Americans in your work? Because that's part of my background. My father is German-American. My mother is Ojibwe, which is also Anishinaabe. So she's from the Turtle Mountains. And this is what I know. And does your fiction spring from memory, or is it your imagination? Both. Some from memory, some invented. And some of the books, for instance, um, The Master Butcher Singing Club was inspired by the German side of my family in World War I. One um, side fought, my grandfather fought in World War I on the German side, emigrated to America, and his sons fought for the U.S. against Germany in World War II. So that's a different book. I have a mixed heritage. And people sometimes refer to your work as magical realism. Mm. What do you think about that? Is that how you would describe it? I would describe it that way because it seems to me that anything that I write could be true. And I try to make sure that there's some way everything could be true. And so what would you describe your work as? I wouldn't ever describe it. You know, it's not, my job is just to write it. I don't have to describe it. <laughs> that's our, jo that's <laughs> right? our job, isn't it? We find, we find labels for things right. all the time as journalists. Um, as a Native American, how do you view the upcoming US elections? We are so focused on trying to elect Barack Obama again. And, you know, there's, it's a, it seems to be a very close race some days. It's very close. Some days it seems as though he's pulling ahead. But Barack Obama has um, finally signed the um, in indigenous people's rights, the, uh, the hallmark of caring about indigenous peoples. He has passed legislation, violence against women. He has given money to tribal colleges. He's increased funding for the first time any president has for Native American people. He's been great for us. We have to elect him. Yeah, <laughs> we have to have him. And you come from two different backgrounds, as mm. he does. Right. How do you think, I mean, what's the appropriate way to describe him? People call him mixed race or right. whatever. What, what do you feel comfortable with? That's good. I, you know, there's increasingly a mixture of, of backgrounds for people. And that's the way of the world. We're becoming a very interconnected world, ever more connected. So I feel as though we're all going to have um, a very mixed heritage as time goes on. And this will be, become a norm, a, a, a part of life. And the political struggles faced by um, Native American people are something that you deal with in your books, mm -hmm. like in um, The Plague of Doves. It's based on true events. Yes. Um, in writing about things like that, is it a form of healing or retribution or how do you see it? I think it's a very good way of putting it. A form of healing is something that occurs in the writing and in the reading as a transaction of the heart between a reader and a writer. So that's how I hope the books come across, although there's often violence, there's often but there's also incredible joy and peace in, in Native culture, and I hope that comes across too. Now we're living in this age of e-books and 
technology, but you own an independent bookstore in Minneapolis. Yes. How's that going? And why are you sort of sticking to your guns and having a shop when so many of them are closing down? I have, under here, I have a Birchbark Books t-shirt on, <laughs> which I'm not going to rip it, <laughs> rip my jacket apart. But I have a small bookstore because we need small independent venues in order to have freedom of expression. If we only have one giant corporate source for our information, in fact, a source that can be turned on and off, it will be, uh, we won't have a free society. So we need bookstores the way we need air, the way we need freedom, the way we need our, our, um, our lives to be led as free people. This, I think these are essential. Let's talk about your own new book, Chickadee. Um, it takes place in 1866. Often the American culture focuses on now and the future, mm. um, whereas you tend to always look back at history. That seems very important to you. History is important, but um, the book that's out right now here is contemporary. So I, I also write about contemporary concerns and the passions and and relationships of people in the present.